Hey guys, it's Prissy. Today I am checking my INR and I thought, you know what, it might be a good idea to film this in case there's someone out there that just got a machine and needs to know how to use it. So I'm gonna actually check my INR on camera. Unfortunately, after I had my daughter, I was diagnosed with multiple large blood clots and pulmonary embolisms. And I'm very thankful to be here. I'm, I'm lucky that I survived, many don't. But what comes with that is actually being on thinners. For me, it's at least a year. So you have to actually check your blood and make sure that your blood is not clotting too fast so that you'll get more blood clots and that your blood is not clotting way too late so that you would have an internal bleed or bleed out. It's it's pretty critical that you check your INR. Now we travel a lot, so I had to get my own personal one because I was having to stop and find hospitals in random places we go all over the country. And I'll never forget, we were somewhere in Kansas and I couldn't find one and check my INR and it was a terrible feeling. So they did give me the machine. If you're lucky enough to have a machine, good. They're not that difficult to use, but it does take a little bit of explanation for you to understand. So here, I'm just gonna run through it real quick. I've got the coag check and it's very nice. It comes with the machine. It comes with the actual pricker that you can adjust the depth that you would like for it to go. Um, I personally don't use this because you have to fumble with the actual needles. I choose the Christmas trees is what I call them, the disposable prickers that come with it as well. Just because I'm not touching a needle, there's not an open needle out. I have children. If I forgot to throw it away, it's no danger. I know that's silly and I never forget to throw it away, but I don't know, I'm just trying to be cautious. Also, you will have a box and on this box, you can see this is the test strips. Inside of it, you will find your capsule with the test strips in it and you're also going to find inside of there a chip right here that you insert into your machine that's probably the hardest thing about this and that's not hard at all is just remembering to swap out the chip every time that you get a new box so I'm actually done with this so I'm taking this out I don't have any more strips in here so I ordered it you do need to order it Every time you only have three strips left, you need to order a new set. The new set looks kind of different. That's why I wanted to show you the box, just in case you get the other box, because look, they're not that different, but there is definitely a difference this time. And inside of this box, they have it sealed, so I'm always smart and go for the bottom. Wi-Fi to seal, right? Inside there is the capsule with your test strips, and like I said, you're also gonna see in there a new chip. That's the hardest thing to remember, really. And that's not hard, like I said, you got this. So you just insert the chip into your machine. Boom. And that is what's gonna match up to the test strips. When it's time to do it, they will advise you to use some sort of alcohol pad to wipe your finger before you actually take your blood just to prevent infection or whatever. But to me, I would rather not do that. I just go and wash my hands with really good soap because doing this, you don't want to do anything that could potentially dilute your results and the alcohol wipes could potentially dilute your results. At the same time, they do provide you with these little suckers, I don't know what you call them, that you can use to get the blood quickly off your finger and then put it onto the test strip. But again, I think that there is a delay between getting the blood in here and then squeezing the blood onto the test strip and maybe my blood might clot between here and there and I want a more true result. So I just prick my finger after I've washed it, no alcohol. I prick it and then I just drip the blood onto the test strip. With this, they will tell you not to touch the strip, but you can let your blood drop touch your strip gently. The main thing is do not let this machine move. It's calibrating, it needs to stay stationary. Do not have it on any kind of a fumbly surface and also don't have it to where that when you're using it, while it's checking, it could move because that's definitely gonna hurt your results. So I just simply, after I wash my hands and I prick my finger, I just drip the blood directly onto the test strip. And like I said, you just touch it gently if you need to because you do not want to move this machine. Have this machine on a very stable, firm, flat surface. It doesn't need to move. It can mess up your results. You don't wanna waste test strips because they only give you six and 
you don't want to just be wasting it. it costs money if your insurance doesn't cover it so let's check our INR here are the Christmas trees I was referring to 